Okay, perfect. Uh, so hello everyone. My name is Yvonne Ivanescu. I am a Canadian currently living here in Rio de Janeiro. I am a travel marketing uh, specialist strategist. I'm the founder of Fernway Marketing, which is a travel and tourism business. I'm also a doctoral candidate at the University of Brussels. So I'm studying community-based tourism and digital marketing. I'm looking at how community-based tourism projects are able to access uh, the domestic and international markets through direct and indirect uh, distribution channels. And uh, I have a very strong background in uh, social media. I worked at Ogilvy and Mather, and uh, I worked with uh, Dragon, with Jameson Whiskey, with Nespresso. I did freelancing. I published a book about social media, um, but I kind of found my passion in tourism and travel, and that's where I am right now. And hopefully we'll be uh, here for the coming years. <laughs> So I'm, I guess I'm going to be starting the presentation. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about how to effectively market your sustainable tourism business. Um, please let me know. I don't know if there's a, if I'm a, like a chat function or anything. I tend to also speak really fast, but I'll try to slow it down. Um, so what is sustainable tourism? I am... Um, I kind of took this, uh, this quote from the United Nations World Tourism Organization, a sustainable approach to tourism means that neither the natural environment nor the social cultural fabric of the host communities will be impaired by the arrival of tourists. On the contrary, the natural environment and the local communities should benefit from tourism, both economically and culturally. Sustainability implies that tourism resources and attractions should be utilized in such a way that their subsequent use by future generations is not compromised. So uh, when I think of sustainable tourism, I think of kind of a trinity, and we talk about environment, a society, and economy. Uh, so there are a number of tourism products that can be found underneath the broad umbrella of the term of alternative or sustainable tourism. So things such as ecotourism, ethical tourism, volunteer tourism, and my specialty, which is community-based tourism. So I study community-based tourism as my subject for my uh, doctoral uh, for my PhD. So I'll be talking a lot about that kind of aspect about community-based tourism. And I focus a lot in Latin America. So that's kind of my specialty. Um, so a big part of sustainable tourism is to make sure that tourism, uh, tourists brings no environmental harm uh, to the area that they visit and that they also support the local community in the process. I think the idea, I mean, one of the arguments is that tourism will never be completely sustainable as every industry has impacts, but we can definitely work towards making it more sustainable. And um, as more regions and countries develop their tourism industry, it produces significant impacts on natural resources, consumption patterns, pollution, and social systems. So I feel, and I feel a lot of people since, uh, in 2007, it was named by the UNW Tour as the Year of Sustainable Tourism, that there is this need and, and this trend and this, and this understanding that there's a need for sustainable and responsible planet, planning and management um, for, and that's really imperative for the industry to actually survive as a whole. Now, um, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about, I think that's really important, is uh, content marketing. And I feel that whether you're doing sustainable tourism or whether you're doing just any type of business, content marketing is absolutely imperative. Uh, I find and I see a lot of the time when I'm talking to tourism businesses um, is that they don't understand that before they can click uh, post on a Facebook page or anything like that. But there's a whole process that you need to be doing beforehand to be able to understand what exactly, um, who you're talking to, um, what you'll be talking about, where you're gonna be talking about, what your goals and objectives are, et cetera, et cetera. So there is this absolute need um, for everyone to be able to create a really strong content marketing strategy um, before even you know, posting the, a single tweet or a single Facebook page. So we're gonna be going through that and we're gonna be also talking uh, specifically with how to incorporate sustainability and, and your responsible business within, uh, within your content marketing strategy. So content marketing is like a first date. If all you do is talk about yourself, there won't be a second date. 
So one of the things that I find with a lot of individuals and a lot of businesses, it's that they often talk about themselves um, when you need to be always talking about what you can offer the individual that's coming um, to, to your business and, and what you can offer that individual. So I want you to take, I want you to keep that in mind as we go ahead. So what is content marketing? So content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable customer um, action. So I like to use um, this kind of a scenario um, when people ask me, do I really need a content marketing strategy? And so I say to individuals, I say, imagine this, you walk into a jazz cafe full of strangers and state that you're a professional golfer. Then you talk about your love of knitting all night every time someone tries to initiate a conversation with you. Now, what is wrong with that picture? So the obvious, I think the obvious answer is that if you're going into a jazz cafe, you're not supposed to be talking about golfing or knitting or anything like that. You need to be focusing on the individuals and their needs and their, and their wants and, and who they are. So jazz, that's the most important thing. So you need to understand who your, uh, who your audience is and, and how to speak to them. So at the bottom, you can see that uh, digital marketing is, I, I say it's like the trinity of digital marketing and we look at content, social, and SEO. And those are three things that are absolutely imperative if you're gonna be doing digital marketing. So it's not only content and it's not only social, so it's not only social networks like Facebook and Twitter and everything like that, but it's also content. You need to have content. It is so frustrating when I see businesses, um, tourism businesses that are, they just don't have content, they don't create content, they don't, um, they don't do any of that. And then when their social media kind of suffers, uh, they are a little bit taken aback and they don't understand why. So you need to have social, you need to have content, and you need to have uh, SEO, which is search engine optimization. So you need to have keywords, web speed, um, you need your, a website, obviously, that runs really well. I mean, it's so incredibly important to have a website, and so many times I see individuals that have poor websites, that don't have functioning websites, websites not um, that you know, don't have the keywords, they don't have the languages that are needed, so that's really important also. Um, so SEO is basically, the keywords allow you to rank on Google organically so that if someone is looking for, let's say, bird watching in Rio Hello. de Janeiro, they'll be able to, to Hello. find you. Hello? No, I'm trying to, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so That's okay. <laughs> Um, so you're able to, uh, you're able to, I lost my chair of thought, one sec. <laughs> uh, you're, you're able to rank organically on Google, um, so that if someone is Googling, for example, bird watching in Rio de Janeiro, uh, you'll be able to pop up on their search feed, which then will drive them to your website and hopefully they'll be able to purchase you and you drive them through uh, the sales funnel. So a good content marketing strategy will ask these questions. So why do you want to communicate? Who do you want to communicate with and how? What to communicate and where will you communicate? So you need to be asking all these questions and answering all these questions all at once. So let's break all of these down one by one. So creating a content marketing strategy. What are your goals and objectives? I find that a lot of times people have absolutely no goals or objectives of what they want out of their business. So the idea here is um, to ask uh, why you want to communicate, uh, what you want to communicate, and, and ask if you want to communicate your sustainability efforts in the first place. And um, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to enter new markets? Do you want to get your customers to support your efforts? Uh, you have to think of all these kinds of things. But what I want to tell you and I want, what I want to really be specific about is that I want you guys always to be very, very, very specific on what you want to achieve. And the reason I'm saying this is because if you are, if you are not specific, you will not be able to measure this in the end. And 
there is no point of having a goal or an objective if you're not able to measure it to see if it's working or if it's not working. So for example, I, I give an example at the end, which is specific objectives. So increased website traffic versus increased organic website traffic by 50% each year. So you can see the, the difference in those two things. So creating a customer persona. Sorry. So many times I ask people, who are they marketing to and they don't know. So one of the examples was I sat down with a travel, um, a tour, a tour agent, a, a travel agent here in Rio de Janeiro, and he does tours in Rio. And I asked him, okay, so who is your customer persona? What type of person are you, are you marketing to? Are you marketing to the backpacker, uh, the luxury travel? Like, who is it? And he told me he didn't know. So then I said, well, then how are you different? What makes you different than all the other tour agencies or tour, you know, tour, people that offer tours in Rio de Janeiro? It doesn't because you don't know who your person is. And as a result, you don't know how to market towards them. So who is your public? Why are they interested? Are they interested in sustainability? And are they looking for authentic, ex or are they looking for authentic experiences? So let me break it down a little bit more and, and answer the question of what is a customer persona? A customer persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on market research and real data about your existing customers. So we can, they, sometimes use customer personas or buyer personas. So when creating your buyer persona, customer persona, consider including customer demographics, behavioral patterns, motivations and goals. The more detail you are, the better. So the way that you do it is just basically you would create kind of a, a fake individual. You would name them, you would go through everything and that person would represent your ideal customer. This does not necessarily mean that you will only have one ideal customer. Some people have a like, range of different types of uh, customers and that's okay as well. But don't go too crazy. You know, you don't want 10 different types of customers. Um, I would say you kind of limit it to three, four, uh, less than five at least. I think that one of the things that you need to also talk about and really look as a sustainable, uh, sustainable business is do, do my customers care that I am a, I'm a sustainable business? I, I, you know, do they care? And you know what? I want everyone to be incredibly realistic about this because one of the places that I went to and um, to do my research uh, in December was this absolutely amazing lodge in the Amazon um, called the Ukari Lodge. And when I was talking to the individuals there, and it's a community-based tourism project, and when I was talking to the individuals there, I asked the question, did you know it was a community-based tourism project? And, and they would say yes. And I said, did that affect whether you would buy or not? And most often they would say, you know what, no, I didn't come here because it was a community-based tourism project. It helps. I liked that it is a community-based tourism project, but it did not make me want to purchase, uh, purchase a ticket here and, and stay here because it was a community-based tourism project. So you need to also think about that. But let's talk about that in two more slides. Um, so common questions you should ask um, when you're doing your customer, when you're doing your customer persona are things like demographic information, their job and level of seniority, um, what does a day of their life looks like, what are their pain points, and how do you help them solve those pain points. So we'll look at, um, we'll look at a customer persona I created for a business here in Rio de Janeiro, and what exactly are pain points. And so pain points are problems or issues that you think that your business can help solve for your customer. So what do they value the most? What are their goals? Where do they go for information? What experience are they looking for when seeking out your products and services? Um, what are their most common objectives to your project service with who, with and how? And most importantly, do they care that you're sustainable? So let's go back to this question of do they actually care that you are sustainable, that you're responsible tourism, sustainable tourism, uh, 
entity project does it matter? And now we're going to look at the Ukari Lodge, uh, which is the lodge that I talked about. It's a community-based ecotourism project based in the heart of the Amazon. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a floating lodge. It's all eco, so it uh, runs on solar panels, um, and, and it is based in the, I hope I don't butcher this word, the Mamirawa Reserve. And um, they have absolutely a, a, a range of different customers. And when I was talking to them and I was trying to understand what type of people come uh, to, to their... Um, to their businesses, uh, to their to their lodge, they they told me they well they have bird watchers. They have this really interesting jaguar expedition in May, where um, they have researchers that have tagged jaguars, and um, in May for only three weeks they will actually go in boats and track these jaguars. So it gives you an absolutely amazing chance to see jaguars in the wild um, with these researchers. Um, but most of the time, people they've said to me that the the reason people come to this lodge is not, oh, it's a community-based tourism project. Oh, it's an ecotourism project. It, they told me that people want to go to the Amazon and then they look for a unique experience. They don't want to go to Manaus and they don't want to do one of those 50 people boat rides where you cram everyone in a boat and they just go out and, and do that kind of a tour. But they want something unique. And I heard authentic and unique so many times. Um, and I was just, I was really interested in that. And, and they always told me that it helps that there's a community aspect. There, it helps that there's a community-based tourism aspect. But the driver is not usually that. I did meet some people who did come specifically for the community-based tourism aspect but not all of individuals are like that. So you need to understand what type of individuals are coming to your business and, um, and be able to market to them differently. You know, you would market to the bird watchers much differently than you would market to the Jaguar, the people that are interested in the Jaguar expedition, right? Um, now, if you do, if you have individuals or if you have um, customer profiles that are very interested in the fact that you are a sustainable tourism and or community-based tourism project, for example, you need to be able to always, always, always provide information. They will tell you and ask you, okay, well, how much money is being reinvested? How much is going back to people? I mean, especially for me as someone who is in community-based tourism, um, who studies it, I'm always very critical about where does the money go? Does it help the community? Does the community run the, the, um, the project? How much uh, power does the community have? You know, and, and you always have to ask these kinds of questions. And as a business, you have to also be able to, to be ready to answer those questions um, if, if someone does ask you. Ask you. Now, one of the great things, and I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to copy this forever and ever. The Ukari Lodge has an absolutely amazing kind of exit. Um, they have an exit kind of uh, survey that they give, uh, they give everyone that leaves. And they have so much information here. And I think that if you ever want to create a customer persona or you want to understand who it is that's coming to your business, this is a great kind of a, a template. It talks about you know, nationality, date, um, what they thought about the different um, aspects, the lake visits, the canoe trips, traditional fishing, what they thought of the community. The Ukari Lodge is, absolute, is, is run, uh, was started not only by the communities, by, but by a research institute. So they have numbers upon numbers upon numbers. I mean, they have a huge file like huge excels with lots of tabs and they can tell you percentages we have 70 percent for example 70 percent foreigners from these countries and only 20 percent of uh, brazilians they have everything mapped out and that also helps because they know how to market well they're for example they know that their market is mostly english speakers so how do we market to those individuals? How do we reach those individuals, you know? And one thing that I absolutely love, and I, I mean love, is that they have this, a uh, number 10, would you recommend, oh, sorry, uh, number 11, would you like to keep in touch with the Ukari Lodge? And you get, they ask for your email. They use that email to create a subscription, like a MailChimp kind of a subscription, but they also send an email at the end of that person's trip, let's say a week after, asking that individual to rate them on TripAdvisor. 
and TripAdvisor, and they have absolutely amazing reviews on TripAdvisor. And again, when I was there and I was talking to the, the tourists there, the reason why they also people came to the Yukari Lodge and they loved it was they said that the reviews were absolutely amazing on TripAdvisor. And I mean, just that little extra step helps, um, has helped them immensely. So I'm just going to take a sip of water, sorry. <laughs> In the end, I think that, in the end, we always want to think that, yes, we're sustainable, we're a responsible business, but it's a business. And the idea is that everyone that is looking at your business is always saying, how can you help me? What is it, what's in it for me? Like, what can you do for me? And that's the first question that you need to answer. And, and obviously, and then you can talk about, uh, that and, and sustainability and what you do, et cetera, et cetera. But you always have to think about, uh, I think the third or slide that we said that, you know, uh, if you only talk about yourself on the first date, then there won't be a second date. You always have to talk about your, your customer. What is it that they want? What can you do for them, you know? So number three is finding your voice and humanizing your brand. I mean, um, a company needs to look like a human being and not an entity. So. How are you going to do this? If your brand was a human being, what kind of personality would they have? Um, so we have here the character persona, the tone, the language, and the purpose. I mean, you have to also understand how you're going to speak on social media. Are you going to be funny? Are you um, going to be authoritative? Are you going to be professional? And, um, I know this isn't tourism related, but I always give the example of this company in the UK called Innocent Drinks. Um, they are, they do some charity work as well, but they rely heavily on humor, but kind of <laughs> funny kind of uh, dad jokes. Anyways, if you have a, a time or if you want to look at a good example, I think it's a really great example of a brand that's really nailed uh, a voice on their social media, on their Facebook. Um, even though it's not tourism related, I always give that example because I think it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so I'm going to give an example of Favela Experience, which is a community, kind of a community run uh, hostel and tours and they have the social impact aspect and they run in the Vichy Gulf Favela here in Rio de Janeiro. I helped them a little bit with finding their voice and creating their customer persona. It was a really rough sketch and an and outline, but I wanted to kind of de demonstrate to you what we put together and, and how we created their voice and, and how they speak and, and their customer persona. So <clears throat> The brand values. When I was working at uh, Social Lab in Ogilvy, uh, one of the things that we did when we wanted a brand to be able to find their, their brand values is we would lay out like 50 pieces of, uh, 50 words written on pieces of paper on a table. And we would ask the person to come in and pick out the words and we would give them like a limit, let's say five words of what you think what words really represent your brand. So we use a lot of, a lot of words, but like passion, inspire, meaningful community, connection, um, the tone of voice. So write the way you speak, not professional, but more informal as like, as in with any friendship, make sure to include your audience into the favela experience community through questions, pictures, or videos. Keep things clear and simple when you can. Limit the amount of exclamation points. Speak with passion. Inspire your audience. Um, remember to always be a storyteller first. And we wanted to also kind of look on the bright side because favelas get a really bad reputation overseas, about, um, and also in Rio de Janeiro, about violence um, and, you know, shootings and drugs and everything like that. So we, we wanted to show the positive initiatives going on in Rio and always to try to spin a negative into positive inspirational point. And then we did languages because um, we had uh, customers that were speaking Portuguese, English, and also uh, Spanish. So this is an example of Amanda. I spelled that wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> So a customer persona would be location in England. Uh, we gave her a range of age, the gender, family, job, income, uh, personality, 
her interests, her hobbies, her passions. So what are the obstacles and issues they face? So looking for an off the beaten path, authentic and culture experience in Rio and ways in which they can create a positive impact while they travel. So how does Favela Experience solve these issues, these obstacles and issues? So we do that through the use of videos and photos of different individuals and tours, provide visitors with an inside look at the type of authentic experience that travelers can experience through Favela Experience Hostel Stay or Tour and then demonstrate positive impact through social media features, blog posts about local individuals that have been impacted by Favela experience, share statistics. So the idea was to um, create a community economic impact study, uh, local features, local stories, sharing stories about events that the uh, Favela experience team is part of. So the pain points, I know we were talking about pain points before, um, but one of the two pain points that we found was that maybe people don't want to come to the business, uh, don't want to come to a football because they're afraid. So uh, we wanted to create maybe social media coverage talking about safety, it could be a Facebook Live talking about it. And then the other pain point was, well, there's not a clear understanding how the tour or the stay at the hostel may actually impact the community that they stay in. So the idea was to create, you know, community economic impact study, looking at the money and revenue that the Favela experience gives to the community and how it gets reinvested back into the community. So this is kind of a really rough um, look at what we did because I did some consulting work for them and how it, how it went and how we created everything. Content is key. I mean, you need to have content. Please, please find content and, and create content. A lot of the times I see, like I, I've worked as a, co a community manager for some businesses where they hire community, uh, uh, a community manager, a social media manager. They have no pictures. They have no videos. They have no strategy. And they say, well, we want to drive individuals to our website to buy our tours. I mean, the poor community manager is probably sitting there being like, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> you need to be able to work together with your community manager. You need to go on these tours. You need to create content. You need to create videos. You need to create these stories. And, and you can't just rely on social media. You also need to create the content. Social media, digital marketing is a full-time job. I mean, it's really important that you work on digital marketing. A lot of the time people, the first thing when the going gets tough is that individuals stop doing social media. They stop doing, uh, they stop doing social media, they stop doing Facebook, they don't do their website, they don't do anything. I mean, if you just look online at statistics, you know, HuffPost reports that over 95% of leisure travels read at least seven reviews before booking their holidays. 60% of leisure are making travel arrangements via the internet. Um, people are looking at the internet um, more than 148.3 million people use the internet to make reservations for their accommodations, tours, and activities. And there are more than 57% of all travel reservations each year. I mean, just go online and look at all the information that's there that says you need to be online, you need to be present, you need to at least have a website, at least be on TripAdvisor, and have maybe a Facebook that is somewhat going on, okay? So create content for that. So let's talk about specifics on, and, and let's segue a little bit more on what you need to be. So you need to be informative and specific. As, um, as people in sustainable tourism, in responsible tourism, a lot of the times people will ask you, what do you do? Why are you sustainable? What is sustainability? What, what, what is it that you do? And you need to be able to, to, you need to be prepared to be able to say, these are our numbers, this is what we do. You need to be entertaining and engaging. I mean, one of the most important things that you do if you do create content is create an emotional connection. You need to have content that makes an individual have a reaction. If your content does not create a reaction, it is not content you should be sharing. So some reactions, cringe, laugh, or cry. Be relevant and unique. So understanding what is appropriate, popular, or timely content for your target audience is important. Be consistent. Facebook now with Facebook algorithms and Instagram algorithms, they're watching you and they're watching on if you are consistently posting. If you are not consistently posting on Facebook or Instagram, they will not be showing your information to people. I mean, organic reach is also already so low. So you need to be able to show these, these platforms, hey, I'm here, I'm committed, I'm posting, I'm trying to get people to comment and share and like. And so that is, that's also a little bit of work and be honest and trustworthy. So 
don't be afraid to open up and put a face backstory and co um, content to your content. So be transparent. I mean, a lot of the times I know that individuals are afraid to share their information, share their backgrounds and share their, their numbers and the money and everything like that. But you need to be able to be transparent. You need to be honest and trustworthy because especially in sustainable, responsible tourism, I feel, I, I think a lot of the times we're expecting the business to be that way. And if there is some, you know, discrepancies or it seems like that individual is not being open, I, you know, I, me personally, I wouldn't trust them and I wouldn't book with them. So let's go very quickly into need to be specific and transparent as examples. I mean, I'm going to go back to these, to the, um, to the Okari Lodge because I absolutely love what they do. They are, like I said, they're, they're a research institute. So they have numbers upon numbers upon numbers. They have everything uh, written down from when they started up until now on the impact, the money, everything. So if anyone ends up coming up to them and say, well, how much money has been reinvested, uh, income, anything like that, they have that. And I think that's amazing, especially for community-based tourism projects. Because for me specifically, I want to know how much has this uh, project, for, uh, for example, generated like for and what has the community gained from it you know i'm not as interested like it's nice that let's say an individual is getting income but how is that individual especially in community-based tourism project how is that money going back to help the community as a whole you know not that one individual and i think that they do a really good job of that now if we want to swing it to let's say another another example of like a hotel um, so this is the Westin, and they also have really great um, specifics on it. You know, uh, one night can mean significant savings, saving water, saving electricity, saving natural gas, saving chemicals. From what I've heard from the individuals <coughs> that I've talked to, the fact that you put this information on your page is is making individuals kind of think more to book with you than other competitors. I mean, if a, com if a competitor, if you have, let's say you're a hotel and your competitor has kind of the same reviews, same pricing, but you put, you, you put things like this kind of information on your website, a lot of the times individuals will more often book because they feel better. It's this kind of, oh, I feel better even though I'm not doing anything and I'm not really helping. Um, I am kind of, if I'm booking with this hotel, let's say over the other hotel. So put it out there, put information there. I think it's, it's really important. Engaging and relevant. I mean, a lot of the time I feel like people don't create content because they, they say things like, oh, well, I can't create, I don't have a camera and I, I don't take really great pictures and I don't have video and I mean, you don't, you, it's social media. Everyone has a, a phone, a camera phone, right? Or some sort of a camera. Take pictures, create engaging and relevant content, create a, a strategy. Um, it doesn't have to be like these pictures, um, but these are great examples of, for example, uh, these are great examples of creating emotional, an emotional reaction. Um, when you look at, you know, the zoos, which is relevant um, and, uh, the emotional reaction with the WWF and Kerala. Sorry about that. <coughs> so yeah, create relevant um, and just go and create. Don't let don't let the fact that you're not a professional photographer or professional videographer stop you. Just go there, create content. You need to start somewhere, right? And you need to be unique. So uh, the picture is, one of the pictures is of the Ukari Lodge, the floating lodge, which is the unique aspect is that it's in a reserve, it's a floating lodge. And the other one is the Abysma Nulas, which is in Bonito. I also went there. It's absolutely amazing. It's a cave and you drop down. Um, and the idea here is that you need to find your unique your unique selling point. I know sometimes it might be harder um, if you're like a hotel or something like that, but you need to find not one unique point, but multiple unique points. So why are you unique? Why would I, again, what's in it for me as the customer? Why would I book you over, let's say this tour, this hotel? What is it that you provide to me that's different? 
I need to know that. And I need to know it right away, you know, especially uh, on websites and stuff like that. I don't want to click, I don't want it on the bottom of the about page or something like that. I want to know, show me what is unique about your, uh, about your product. Why should I buy from you? What's that? <laughs> Sorry. Um, where will you speak? So I think it's really important that a lot of times people um, share cross cross posts from Instagram and Facebook, like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to use what I posted on Instagram. I'm going to put it on Facebook and I'm going to have all these hashtags. I personally hate hashtags on Facebook. I don't find them relevant. I don't think you really, um, I don't think that they're relevant for Facebook and I don't like how they look. So when people do that, it kind of makes it cringe a little bit. Um, that doesn't, some people will disagree with me on that point. Um, but when you create your customer profile, you understand who the person is, and then you have to figure out, well, where am I going to speak and how I'm going to speak. So for example, now in Rio, um, which is one of the other businesses that I, I'm doing, is um, a website that focuses on creating local experiences here in Rio de Janeiro. We're on Facebook and we're on, uh, on Instagram. Now on Instagram, the majority of the individuals that are uh, following me on Instagram are Brazilians. And so then I have a, diff a completely different strategy than on my Facebook, which the majority of the individuals there are um, foreigners. You know, on Instagram, I speak Portuguese. Um, I cater it differently to have nice, nicer like pictures and beautiful pictures that uh, the Brazilian people really like. And then on Facebook, it's more informational. So like I would, for example, on Facebook, I would put information about a restaurant and, and food pictures, but I would never do that on Instagram because my food pictures on Instagram don't work and they're not popular so look at what social networks you want to be on i mean facebook is obviously you can see it's pretty evenly spaced out but and most of them are except for snapchat i mean i'm not quite sure the what's going on with snapchat as instagram stories has kind of taken over we'll see where that goes but for example for snapchat it's overwhelmingly 18 to 24 so for example if you were, if your customer persona is like a, in their late 40s, you would never be on Snapchat, you know? And then how will you measure success? I mean, that's the, 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 the it goes back to number one, the question of defining your objectives and your goals. Uh, if you have objectives and goals, how will you measure your success? And then let's say every six months, every year, and then that will allow you to see, well, in the six months, I did this strategy. It didn't work. I didn't get any bookings. Well, what can I do differently? And so it's, it's this constant thing that you need to look at. I want to say, and I would like to point out, <coughs> please, 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 please. If you're going to take anything out of this, you say like, oh my God, so much information. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and et cetera, et cetera. The one thing that I want you to do, please, is create a relevant and updated website. Not so many people that I know that book, um, they will go to your website and they will look and judge you on your website. Um, design is not as important as information. Everyone nowadays wants to have like these rolling kind of, um, these rolling kind of bars and, and beautiful pictures and all these kinds of things. I, if I'm booking a hostel, if I'm booking a tour and I have to scroll and look for like through design to get to your tour information, I will be clicking out very quickly from your website. You want that information there. You want it clear. Um, you want your website to include all languages. How many times have I seen in South America, in Rio de Janeiro, um, in, in Chile when I was there in, in Buenos Aires where websites are in uh, Spanish or Portuguese, but they're not in English. And for me, I speak Portuguese, so it's not fine. It's not bad. It's not a problem. But so many people I know can't find information. They don't know how to. They don't know. They speak. They don't speak Portuguese, and they'll also be clicking out. Be clear, specific, and concise. Remember, give examples. I also want to say that if your customer personas, for example, are not really that into sustainability or responsible tourism, to kind of avoid using these very technical terms. I always find when I say, hey, so I, I love sustainable tourism, I, I study community-based tourism, a lot of the time people say, wait, what? What is that? What's sustainable tourism? What's community-based tourism? I don't understand. 
So break it down. I mean, on your website, break it down, make it simple. So you'd say we support local communities by this. We buy local products. We do this, like simplify it. Once you start using really kind of jargony language, people get lost a lot of the time, question it, and they get confused. I mean, if I'm trying to book a tour and you say, oh, we are a community-based tourism project, if I'm not really that invested in your, in, in your product and your, what you're providing me, I probably will not look like Google, open another picture, just on another window to Google what community-based tourism project is. I'll probably click out. I'll be like, whatever. I don't know what that is. And especially if you make it like very prominent and stuff like that, I'll click out of that, you know? I want you to add pictures and videos. It's really important if you are in a tour or if you're a hostel or a hotel, I want to see where I'm staying. And I want, I want it to be, again, honest, transparent, and I want to trust you that I'm going to be spending all this money to come there. And you get great, you're sustainable, you're responsible, you're doing all these great things. But if I get to your hotel and your picture's not what it was on the website, or if it's dirty, or if it's, or, or if there's something wrong, you know, you lost me as a customer, I'll be very angry. And I want you also to have clear call to action and set up a funnel that focuses on accomplishing your objectives and goals. So funnels can be like um, subscriptions, uh, so pop-ups, uh, things like that. And I also, I, I really want individuals to clearly state, maybe in an about page or something like that, I really like a website called Sumac Travel, and Sumac Travel actually has a website. Um, it's community-based tourism. Uh, they do tours. They have an about page, and they actually have a link that goes to the responsible tourism policy, where they look, uh, they fo uh, they break down their sustainable tourism policy, their economic, cultural, and it's just and their environmental policy their economic responsibility, their environmental responsibility, and their social responsibility. They also have blogs. I mean, that's another great way of telling people what you're doing. Create blogs. And I think it's really important for a website to always have a blog. And please be careful about greenwashing. I mean, people are getting incredibly more, um, they're, they're kind of getting it of what greenwashing is, especially if someone's a little bit more tuned in to the sustainable tourism, responsible tourism kind of um, the, yeah, the community. So greenwashing is misleading environmental claims that are not backed up by fact. Uh, if you try to greenwash, I feel like you will get caught. And I mean, people are getting savvy. They can Google, they can figure it out. So be very careful about greenwashing. We don't want to, we, we don't want to go down that path. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. Um, that's what I had to say. Uh, if you guys do have any questions or if you have any, like, if you want to email me in the future or anything like that, you can definitely email me at info at fernwaymarketing.com or you can check my website out at fernwaymarketing.com. And I had an absolutely great time talking to you and presenting this. And yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thanks so much, Yvonne. Um, I really enjoyed that. I'm sure everybody did too. Um, I, I am a content marketer though, and you talked a lot about the importance of content there. So I am a little bit biased probably. Um, so let's open it up for questions now. Uh, so to ask a question, you guys just need to raise your hand so I can unmute you. So to do that, just click on the participants button at the bottom of your screen and from there you can raise your hand. So while I'm doing that, I might uh, ask Yvonne a question myself. So don't be shy, raise your hand and get as much knowledge from this webinar as possible. Okay, so um, on to uh, my question. Um, so I think uh, a big part of what you spoke about was finding out whether your customers care or not about your sustainability. So yes. What your favorite way of researching this is. So customer surveys, talking directly, polls on your website, whatever. So how should people listening today get started? I mean, I feel that like the, the example that I gave of the Akari Lodge and their survey was absolutely uh, like I actually used this exact template 
uh, for another business that I'm helping them with their social media and, and digital marketing strategy. So I think surveys are really great. But then with surveys, you need to have someone. Like one of the problems with the individual that I'm talking with now is that their front desk person is not giving the, these surveys out. Um, to their to their customers when they're leaving. So in two months they have three surveys come back, and I mean that's a little bit disheartening. So I would say talking to people. I would say surveys. If you have emails, I mean I would even send out an email um, and to your existing email list with maybe a survey monkey kind of survey and ask them. I mean the the. I think that you just need to talk. I feel like talking, if you have the ability to go out and sit with your customers and have conversations with them, I think that's best because you create also that one-on-one -on -one, report, which is, which is really important, in my opinion, uh, when you are in, in a tourism business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks like we don't have any questions yet. I'll give you guys a little bit more time um, and ask another question that I have. Um, so you also talked about uh, being transparent and showing yeah. numbers of sustainability achievements so far. Um, so for those that want to do that, what's your advice uh, for listeners that don't currently have those numbers? So where should they start out now if they didn't record numbers in the beginning? I mean, I... It really depends, I think, on the business because I feel that if you're a hotel or um, it might be or it depends. I feel that you just need to start from the beginning and just start with uh, just start from the bottom, I guess. So for I would give the example of a community based tourism project. Like if you're already working on a community based tourism project and you you don't know what the impact of your tour has been, you know? You obviously probably already have a rapport with the community. You obviously have uh, some connection with the community. They obviously know you. Um, maybe you, um, maybe there's a community association that might have some information there. Again, I would say to go and talk to individuals, talk to the community, talk to the, to see, um, to see what's going on. And maybe also to establish kind of, um, more of an, a tracking system to understand how much money is going in, how much is going out. I mean, there's a, there's a huge kind of, I, I don't really know exactly what the name is, but when you do, when you set up something, you need to, there's information and, and tracking that you can track how much money is coming in, what, how much is invested in the community. And I mean, just like I said, just start over Google, how you can be able to track all this information. There's so much information out there on the internet that we can find and that we can implement. So yeah, just start from the beginnings and, and see how it goes. And then again, if you do that, and let's say you, your project started in 2014, but you started tracking revenue streams and redistribution and all those kinds of things in 2015, then be transparent and like, oh, this is the amount of revenue that we've created and that's been reinvested into the, the community. But we started from 2015, that's when we started tracking because of this and that, you know? I think that's really important. Um, sometimes things are really easily, easily tracked, um, you know, for some, something like, oh, well, the community built a school or they got a tractor or something like that. Again, I'm really, I'm a little bit biased because of my experiences in community-based tourism, um, but I'm sure that you can just start wherever and just track it and see, and see that, see what, what yeah, you're... Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's about being transparent wherever yeah. you start, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it looks like we don't have any questions today. I'm going to go ahead and assume that that's because you covered everything that everyone could possibly want to know. I hope so. So, um, so thank you so much for joining everyone. Um, I will let you know of more events like this one coming up soon, uh, which I hope to see you all at then. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. And, um, of course, especially to Yvonne for the wonderful presentation. So thank see you. you all next time. Thank you.